Hi everybody, well, as you know I'm using Midjourney quite a lot and uh, sometimes I generate really beautiful images uh, but I always feel like in some images that I want to add something on my own. I'm not kind of satisfied with particular image and of course just refreshing I might get something else even with the variation but some images are just beautiful but I want to add something extra. Sometimes I don't need to do it at all and I'm satisfied but sometimes I want to do more. So here was kind of a toying around uh, with certain prompt and I really like the result until I saw this image. Now I generated different variations of it and uh, until I came across uh, one that I really liked and this one. But after a bit of work in Photoshop I generated the image you're gonna see in front of you in a moment. And this is basically because I wanted to add my own signature into the image and enhance it in a way that well that's how I wanted it to look. And uh, this is the end results after doing some quite a lot of Photoshop work. Uh, again, the main thing maintains the portrait, but other things I'm going to show you how I did it. And uh, maybe it's inspired to do your own Photoshop work, uh, working on Midjourney AI art. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be image or Midjourney, right? Any AI art or any image that you really like to improve. But I'm kind of showing the process how I improve certain images uh, generating uh, uh, generated by me journey and as you can see uh, this is how it looks up close basically I enhances detail uh, edit some of my own things some of the background also generated using me journey as well and of course I'm gonna explain and show you what I did so again this is the before image and this is the after Now usually the first thing that I do, I try to play around with levels to see, you know, how I want the color grading to be, the contrast, the brightness, uh, you know, it just give me kind of a estimation of where I'm actually going with it. Maybe I'm going to change the colors entirely, use something else. So I need to kind of play with it and, you know, until I kind of satisfied with the results. And this kind of give me again, just a hint where I'm going. Otherwise I wouldn't go, I can, I can try many things. But basically, I need to find a way and say to myself, all right, I want it to be dark or less bright or something like that. And then I'm going to go to this path and uh, try many other things in that direction. So basically, I did want a high contrast image. I really like kind of the, the color, the purple. So I didn't want to change it that much. Uh, here, I'm actually want to select the face because I want to make changes to the background. I'm using the object selection tool in Photoshop, but if I just tap it, it doesn't do a good job in actually understanding that I want the entire uh, body. But if I draw around it with the object selection tool, it will able to do this and make a good choice uh, of selection. So I can actually copy paste it into another layer. So here you can actually see me uh, just going with the object selection tool. And what I'm doing, I'm just drawing around Kind of a roughly around the body and that e that part will actually be sent it information will be sent to adobe servers uh, for processing using ai and then it will i retrieve it back as a selection and then i can just uh, copy paste the face into another layer so here you can actually see that i got the results back and the selection was pretty good some areas i can kind of fine-tune it a bit but overall a good selection. Again, it's not going to be like the perfect work, but I'm just showing you the process. And again, I didn't try to like make like something, you know, for an art gallery or something. So, I mean, I spent some time, but not overly amount of time to fine tune it to, you know, to perfection. But you can see that the selection is very, very good that way. So next thing I'm actually duplicating, I always duplicated it. So it's going to appear in a second layer. Now, next thing is uh, trying to work on the background. As you can see, because I separated the layer, I can actually apply a background, a different background uh, to the image. Now, I wanted to keep something that, uh, I mean, I can use the styles, by the way, of any background I choose to apply to the face, but I actually really like it, so I didn't want to change it. But I just play with different colors to see maybe I'm going to change it. Eventually, of course, I need to mix and match things to make it, well, kind of a more harmonic and something that fits actually the lighting of the face, which I really like, I didn't want to touch this at all. 
Now, when I satisfy with the color, uh, I decide to use a mask because I don't want to, some parts, I just want to hide them. Sometimes uh, some parts are going to be visible. So basically the dark part, uh, dark part uh, will be hidden, the white part will be visible. Uh, so uh, I'm playing again with the, with the mask and with the opacity until I get something that I like. Next thing I press Ctrl U uh, in order to bring up the U saturation and then I'm playing with the colors. Try to bring, I didn't want to do colorize, I want to kind of have these different colors, kind of a blue, purple, and later on I'm going to add kind of a, another uh, color to make it more kind of interesting. Now as you can see here, there are lots of details here, but I mean I really like it, but I want it to be more prominent. I mean all this area uh, of the light you know, this electronic light thing, I want it to be much more prominent, much more, more prominent. Uh, the way I did it, I went to uh, uh, stylize and I've chosen trace, trace contour. And this way I actually got, you know, the lines and this is the things that I actually wanted to emphasize. So what I need to do is just, uh, copy to another layer and select this area. Now the way that I uh, created the highlight for these areas, I went to stylize and choose trace contour and this allows me to, uh, after desaturating it, to copy those lines and actually apply glowing to it in the effects. Otherwise, just selecting them, uh, you know, with the selection tool, it won't be easy. So I need to find kind of a trick in order to do it. Maybe there are other ways be better, but that's what I know. And as you can see, those lines, this is exactly what I wanted. So basically I needed to uh, select it, create it, and then desaturate it. So I have black and white, so it's easy to select afterwards. After that, I went to the color range and selected the black color, or the gray color. Uh, and in order to copy it to a new layer and then I can apply it individually just to those lines. Basically I'm going to hide the lines anyway, it's just for applying the glow. So here I'm fine tuning the selection, as you can see, until I get something that I more or less like. Again, it doesn't have to be super accurate, uh, but accurate enough. And uh, then I have the layer which I'm going to hide. You can see I go to here and put fill and then it's going to hide the black, but then I can just apply glow and look at the difference. It just brings everything out. And then I can change, of course, the glow color and everything, but look at the difference. It just gives this extra dimension, dimensionality to it. And the detail is very, very important because again, this is one of the highlights of the image. So I really wanted it to pop. Now to make it more interesting, I went with kind of a more yellowish color. I really like that. Um, I didn't want to go with purple because it just seems like everything is too purplish. So I went with uh, kind of a yellowish color and it would actually turn to be really good. That being said, I didn't want to be at the bottom. It actually kind of applied the light to the bottom. I, I And it, it, some, it causes some things that I didn't like. So basically what I did was creating a mask and masking the bottom part of the area a bit. You see the details there with the light? I don't know, I just didn't like it. Anyway, I just masked it a bit and so it will look the way I wanted it to look. Now the other thing is playing with the colors. I knew I wanted something just a bit different, but I need to play with it to see what I like more. So again, I wanted kind of, you see it's kind of a, I mean it's nice, don't get me wrong, I really like that, but I wanted something extra. So this one I went to uh, colorize. Uh, and uh, I mean color balance, sorry. And then I play with it. I want something a bit more bluish. Yeah, so this is the final result. Another thing that I wanted to do is kind of make the lips more reddish, emphasize it in the image. Now, the way you do it is just using the sponge tool in order to saturate this particular area. After that, again, playing with colors, I wanted to add more colors. 
again not something too dominating so it won't dominate the purple and the blue but add another kind of color so it's too much the green and eventually I kind of was satisfied with the cyan color and looks just beautiful it kind of harmonized well with the purple after that I generated an art another air art uh, using me journey for the background all right so actually I like this one it seems fit and I brought it into Photoshop so I brought it into Photoshop again I position it behind the face layer and then I try to kind of uh, uh, apply some effects so it can actually uh, mix well with the background itself I didn't want that background I wanted to mix with the previous uh, colors that I made uh, so again, a few tweaking here and there, and a bit more work, and I got actually what I need. After that, I wanted some kind of a bright light, something that give again another dimension, so it'd be more three-dimensional. So uh, one of the options uh, was to just create, I don't know, a layer and kind of apply Gaussian blur or, you know, try to, I tried different things, but eventually what worked for me was applying higher saturation to the contour area uh, around the neck and the shoulders of the character and that's actually turned to be really good So after that, it looks really nice. I'm very close to kind of uh, finishing it. I mean, you all can always do more, but again, at some point, of course, I'll stop. Uh, but I really like the overall result. I didn't want the background to be too harsh. I didn't want to take over the face. I want also the subtle, uh, you know, of the face to kind of merge well with the background. So I didn't want something too harsh. Yeah, so a bit of work, uh, starting for a beautiful image, and then kind of taking it to the direction that I wanted to take it. And there are different ways, of course. I just wanted to add my own creativity into the image and kind of uh, make it more of my own. And uh, this is the result. And yeah, I hope you like it. You know, kind of uh, using Photoshop to enhance the image and uh, make it something well more of what you want it to be. You Not know, just, just taking the default of what Midjourney creates, try to add your own stamp into the image. And that's about it. I hope you found this one useful and inspiring. Consider maybe leaving a like and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one. Thank you.